contestants are battling for the People's Democratic Party PDP ticket for the October governorship election in Ondo State. Among the contestants are Deputy Governor Bola Ajayi, former Ondo State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Eitayo Jegede, and more. The primary is being chaired by the Governor of Enugu State, Ifani Ugwani. The police command in Ondo State had earlier deployed not less than 800 personnel to monitor the exercise. Also, it was stated that only delegates, aspirants, agents, journalists and security personnel will be allowed into the venue after the primary. Joining us to discuss this is Dapo Daramola, political analyst. Thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure. Um, uh, could you bring us up to speed what is unfolding at the moment um, for the governorship uh, primaries in Ondo State? We understand it's happening in our career at the Dome. Well, um, I, I, rather, I would say that uh, quickly that uh, the information we're having is that, um, surprisingly though, that uh, the, the, the primary is going well so far. Um, and I think that uh, why I say surprisingly is because uh, one was expecting that because of all the hue and cry uh, that that took place the moment uh, the former deputy governor uh, joined uh, the PDP, everybody felt that uh, the likes of uh, Professor Ita Jagede, senior advocate of Nigeria, and the other, and the other aspirants uh, will will kick. But um, I think the memorandum of understanding that they signed also so far is putting everybody in check. Uh, how, and uh, how, no doubt, how, you know, how, how strong is your faith in that memorandum of understanding? Because we know that in previous primaries, we've seen situations where an MOU is signed, everybody agrees they're going to play ball and ensure the support to candidate. But you tend to see afterwards lawyers getting fat on payments uh, for going to court over one discrepancy um, or the other within the party. Do you expect that this memorandum of understanding will hold much weight? Well, I think so. I think, um, you see, in this instance, just like what we had in Edo, uh, you have to look at what your strength, you know, what strength the party has. And the candidates that have, that have emerged, you know, for the PDP, uh, let, let, me, let me not say emerged. I mean, the candidates that have you know, come up to contest in the primary, particularly Gordon Obaseki in Edo State and also um, the likes of Agwala Ajayi in uh, Ondo State, based on the, the, the facts on the ground, this, this seems to be uh, the, the strength that they have right now. Yeah. And I'm sure that they will pull everybody. You know, everybody was expecting that the likes of Kenneth and Maxwell Agbon was going to make a, you know, a, a lot of heat force, you know, out of what happened in Ado State. But you can see that, you know, they all seem to be rallying around, you know, Gordon Obaseki. Because whether you like it or not, you have to look at, you know, what your strength, you know, going into the main election, you know, looks like. So for me, I think, you know, as we speak today, I mean, for, for the strength that Abola Jai is bringing on board, I'm not too sure that, you know, they will have too much problem after this primary. I'm not saying that it's going to emerge, as a candidate, but I'm saying that, I mean, the, the battle will be between Abola Gai and the Ita Jekede, obviously. Yep. And so I think they want to put their best leg forward. Because at the end of the day, it, it, you know, um, it's all for one and one for all. So, and that, that's the nature of politics. So I'm sure they want to be prepared. Okay. Because, you know, I think APC already, they made a catastrophic um, calculation or miscalculation the moment they, they get you know, the popular demand. All right, from everybody, we, we, especially we will those come to, we, will, we, will, we will come to the APC in a bit. We, they had their day a couple of uh, days ago when they had their primaries. Now we're focusing on the PDP. Um, I must um, uh, say that we did try to get um, a chieftain and a former secretary of the Southwest PDP in Ondo State, but we're still hoping to connect with them. In the meantime, we still have uh, Mr. Dakbo uh, Daramola on the phone. I, I want to ask you, before now, where are their concerns about about the security situation, uh, maybe uh, some aggrieved parties might disrupt the event. So I, I didn't get that. 
I'm asking, were there any security concerns prior to the primaries being held today? No, at all. At all. At all. And that's why I said, you know, when, when I started, when I started, I said that uh, we were, for me, it's been a bit surprising. I mean, this is one of the first times that, you know, um, in a long time that the party PDP seemed to be tidying things up properly. You know, they, they, they look to me more organized. Um, the biggest challenge, like I said, I will have thrown this, this whole process into a chaos will have been if, you know, um, Abola Jai was not, you know, uh, accepted, you know, into the party and also in terms of uh, contesting this process. But so far, it seems that um, there is a recognition, you know, that um, they, they, they must look at the strength that they have. I think that is what everybody seems to be queuing behind. But he's not, the, he's not the only, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Daramola, he's not the only candidate. We have about eight other, um, seven other contestants for uh, the uh, ticket. Don't you think that there is anyone among these uh, other seven that would uh, give him a run for his money? Is he the only viable candidate for the PDP today? I'm sure that, you know, if you look at the undercurrent, if you look at the undercurrent, and also how he was um, allowed to join the party at this time that he did. It is because, don't forget that, yes, I know that the likes of Eita Ojekede, Bodhi Ayonike, uh, uh, Gio Lafeso, you know, uh, these are strong party men. And as long as PTP has, they didn't show um, that, that they have capacity, you know, for whatever reason, maybe because of the unpopularity, you know, of because if you cast your mind back to the election last year, the presidential election, you remember that PPP, I mean, Atiku won largely in Ondose. 11 local governments out of the city went to Atiku. So it tells you that PPP is on the ground. It's not as if they are, forget the fact that they may, they, they may not look organized before now. Okay, but the, but the, the, that's why I'm saying that in politics, you must look at your strength. Okay. And your strength is the fact that you must build on what success you have recorded. Mr. Daramon, I need to ask you this. I need to ask you this before I, um, it skips uh, my mind. The APC uh, primary that was held the other day, we know that some candidates stepped down for the incumbent uh, governor. Um, uh, is there anyone in the PDP that has stepped down for the deputy governor um, in this uh, primary today. Are you aware of that? No, as we speak now, I do not have that information. So I don't want to demonstrate. But like you said before, you know, to write on the question that you, you asked earlier, the, if you look at the strength of the deputy governor, not just because he's deputy governor, but politically, his strength. The amount of, if you look at even the, the, the motion that was moved in the House of Assembly to get him impeached, the fact that he has nine loyalists within those party members, you know, that refused to, to, to join the process, and the amount of people, the likes of, the, you know, the S1 uh, Secretary to the State Government, the Honorable Inspector Yohabekunde, who also dumped the APC, shortly after the deputy governor left, it tells you, I mean, these are stalwarts, but these were stalwarts within the APC. And for them to have dumped you know, the APC at the time when the deputy governor did, it tells you that, you know, he has gone into these primaries with a lot of, you know, a lot of strength. So that's why I said, whilst I understand that there are quite a number of uh, candidates who are equally as strong, I mentioned, you know, the former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in uh, in uh, Ondo State, that's the Italian Executive. We all know he's pretty strong. And you are so, has been a stalwart of the party over time. He has served the party in many capacities. He is equally a very strong candidate. Boluwaji Kulele is a former senator and is equally a strong candidate, including Bodhi Ayoride, who was a former member of the House of Justice. Uh, Justice. But what I'm saying is that if you look at coming into this primary, the party, for me, the body language of the party is that, yes, the more the merrier, but I think they, they are consistent to the fact that the, the, uh, the Abola Jai is bringing much more 
to the table at a time like this for the PDP. All right, Mr. Daramola, thank you very much uh, for your time and your input uh, on the conversation. Always my pleasure, please. We're going on a short break, and when we come back, the conversation continues. Don't go away. Ask the service chiefs to step aside following the killings of soldiers who are fighting insurgency and banditry in some parts of northern Nigeria. The motion was moved to the floor of the Senate via a point of order moved by the chairman of its committee on army, Senator Ali Ndume. Those who contributed to the motion lamented the implication of the disturbing development, stressing that it was capable of frustrating the war against insurgency and banditry. The Senate notes with concern the various reports of casualties among the Nigerian Army and other security agencies. The Senate further notes that just recently, 24 soldiers were ambushed and killed along Dambua Meduguri Road in Borno State. 19 were wounded and 9 were declared missing in action. The Senate is disturbed that in Kachina, again, about 20 soldiers were also ambushed and killed, while several others were wounded. The number of civilian casualties is not known. The Senate appreciates the sacrifice of our armed forces in the fight against insurgency banditry and protection of territorial integrity of Nigeria and several other security assignments given to them. The Senate is concerned that if the trend continues, it will have serious implication on the fight against insurgency, banditry, and other forms of criminality in the country. Mr. President, I rise to second the motion as heavily moved that the service chiefs step aside for new people to come in. I so second. I support this motion and I plead that we do not take things for granted any longer in Nigeria. Because it got to the point, I'm sure you are aware, that last week the states of soldiers deserted the army. When it gets to the point where soldiers who are trained to fight and possibly die decide to leave their command, then we have a problem. I think this is time for us to be more decisive in dealing with this, this situation. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. I think uh, the spirit of this motion, excuse me, the spirit of this motion is that our armed forces are trying very hard, just like the president said, the good is still not enough, but we need to continue to encourage them. We need to continue to provide for them. We need to continue to provide for them. They lay their lives on behalf of all of us. And of course, it's very sad that some of them are deserting, are alleged to have deserted the war front. But we need to get to the bottom of this. This, our joint committee, should be able to find out the, uh, the facts about this allegation of over 200 deserting uh, the war front, and of course, uh, those that are dead will observe a minute's silence, but let me also convey our condolences uh, to our armed forces and the families of those that have. When we had this conversation in January, I concord with House of Representative member Abubakar Fulata's statement that Doing the same thing over time without a tweak in tactic would yield the same result, and to expect something different is insanity. It is imperative that President Muhammad Buhari heed advice and let the service chiefs go. Fresh ideas are needed in the management of this country's security situation. Besides that, their resignation or removal will allow for the promotion of other deserving officers in the armed forces. A lot has been said already. I just urge Mr. President to listen and prioritize the country's security over any other interest that he may have. And that's how we wrap things up tonight. Thank you, as always, for watching. Remember, you can catch other episodes of this program on Plus TV Africa's YouTube channel. Until I see you next time, be well. <laughs>